Prosecutors from two different jurisdictions expected to go head to head over a cold case, but things turned out differently. In Pomona today, a serial predator learns he's going to be spending the rest of his days behind bars. The hearing had two district attorneys arguing over the 40 year old case with the victim's family in the middle. Laura Diaz is live at the courthouse to break it all down for us. Laura? Yes, this story is who you believe. Todd Spitzer, he is the DA from Orange County, who said that justice might not be served today, or the DA of LA County, George Gascone, who characterized Spitzer's remarks as, quote, dangerous. Now back to the beginning. This case has gone on way too long. The Artero family and us, we have gone through so much misery. And now it's coming to a close. In 1981, six-year-old Jason Vargo was kidnapped from Anaheim Hills. His body was found in Pomona. Five years later, the body of five-year-old Miguel Antero was found in Agora Hills. DNA evidence linked both cases to this man, Kenneth Rasmussen. Rasmussen has been in jail since 2015 on these charges, awaiting his day in court. And he's previously served time for sexually assaulting a boy in Santa Barbara. Today, he pleaded guilty and will serve a life sentence. And I'm here to speak about my cousin, Miguel Antero, who was brutally murdered in 1986. But this story is far from over. There was a tug of war between OCDA Spitzer and LADA Gascon. Spitzer wanted the Vargo case himself since the boy was from the OC. He contends that under Gascon's reform agenda, there was a chance Rasmussen might someday have gotten a parole hearing, something Spitzer wouldn't stand for. Spitzer posed this question. Should we as an LA district attorney's office rethink our directives? I am praying to God, quite frankly. I am literally down on my hands and knees on this one, praying to God that he will reconsider these directives. They are hurtful. They are wrong. You can achieve justice by doing the right thing. But late today, LADA Gascon said a court had already ruled that the tough so-called special circumstances would not be dismissed. He issued this statement. The defendant was always facing life in prison, making the rhetoric from tough on crime voices incredibly dangerous and entirely removed from reality. Either way, the families of both victims are satisfied with the outcome. I'm happy the outcome that we have will never, will allow him to never, ever, come out and injure or hurt another child. As we told you at the top of this report, of course, this was a cold case, but you can listen right there and hear the pain in those families' voices. It was so very poignant today as if it happened yesterday. They both told me that they felt closure because of what occurred today in court. As for the dueling DAs, we have an open invitation to both of them to speak to Fox 11. When I hear more, I'll get back to you. Laura Diaz reporting live from Pomona. Now back to the studio. Chris but in Howard. terms of those jurisdictional questions, was that itself ever really answered by the judge today? Well, you know, some of that seemed to be have decided in advance. Um, I wasn't myself in court, but my understanding of it from those who were was that there seemed to be some sense that this was going to happen today before court even started. But the family certainly didn't feel that way. They had hired their own attorney to fight for them, and they felt that indeed some of the new revelations that have been made by the uh, L.A. County D.A. might be put into place, and that if those special enhancements were actually not uh, put in place, that perhaps the person who they allege killed and brutalized their loved one could one day possibly walk free. That was their greatest fear, and that's why they were here today in court. And we're already starting to see some of these jurisdictional fights with the DA in Orange County, as you mentioned, the one in San Diego, and others as well who are not on the same page as George Gascon. That'll be a big part of the story going forward. Laura, thank you so much.